uh, one. One might on sparse multitask expression for any kind of response to therapeutic targets. Uh, my name is Kai Zhang, and this is joint work with Joe Gray and Brian Parvin from Life Sciences Division of the National Lab. Uh, um, first, I'll start from motivation and experiment design. Uh, I'll point out several challenges encountered and give a big picture approach first. Then, after a brief review on the sparse regression, I will propose our sparse multitask regression method and evaluation the molecular results will fall. In the end, we'll make conclusions. The motivation of our work is to study the effect of cancer therapeutic cell cycle. As we know, loss of normal cell cycle or cell cycle checkpoint um, is one of the primary mechanisms for cancer progression. Um, some therapeutic targets uh, will block the um, cancer progression by hitting certain molecular regions. Um, therefore, given um, different drugs that hit potentially different regions of the molecular base, um, we would like to know is there a common mechanism of action, response, or resistance? Now back to the experiment design. We have incorporated a panel of 14 breast cancer cell lines, and we measured the baseline gene expression data. Um, we measured the cycle cycle data that represents biological responses quantified through high throughput microscopy under two drug conditions and a control. Okay. So, uh, next question is um, why do we utilize 14 cell lines? Why measure the baseline gene expression data, and why high throughput microscopy? Next, I will, ju I will justify this. Uh, first, going back to why we use the pen for breast, breast cancer um, cell lines, uh, because it leads to molecular diversity. As we know, molecular diversity is very desirable because it improves the computational robustness. The cell lines we have been using are well characterized genomically, in terms of the copy number and methylation. And this also serves as a model for personalized medicine. Uh, next, let me give you some examples of um, diversity. For example, some cell lines we've been starting uh, positive, some are positive, and some are triple negative. Very interestingly, the lack of diversity will also lead to a phenotype by our real work, where we find that even EGFR positive will lead to groups like Colonies negative will form a more invasive um, step. Second, we heard the, uh, the gene expression data um, using FB metric array only under um, the baseline condition but not under the drug conditions. Um, this experiment is experimental design actually is to save the experimental cost. Um, nowadays, um, gene expression profiling for a single experiment takes about Four hundred dollars, and this has to be further multiplied by the number of cell lines, number of drugs, and number of replicates. Of course, this uh, reduction of cost is achieved by assuming linear changes in the gene expression profile. Um, third, remind that we have used a uh, high throughput uh, microscopy to uh, measure the cell cycle data. Uh, why? Because First, it reduces the number of cells needed compared with the more traditional approach. Uh, it can compute much richer morphometric profiling with shape, structure, and organization of the cells. We have actually used um, BioSeq and um, developed a group for cell cycle analysis. This is the whole experiment. Format and each uh, is scanned with 14 fields of views. The images are uploaded to a biosix system with with animal uh, images. Um, uh, which enables the calculation of total basis. image for a single 
when all the Israelites accumulate the bought the the uh the total for further cell cycles you uh the example of here falling into Launching version data using app image and uh, we apply inhibitors and we tell them how to um, unwrap. First, I want some challenge and give you a big picture of our approach. Um, as you can see, the data is very, very high dimensional with each other in a way. From the phenotypic you know, information on a number of different drug conditions, with the medical information with uh, to find action with very few training samples available. This problem, uh, we propose a sparse multi-task regression with co-clustering. I will give you a very big picture here first. Um, first, sparse regression helps to remove irre irrelevant features and performs model selection, which is a very useful tool for high dimensional data analysis. Second, we combine it with multitask learning uh, to handle the cases where we have um, multiple related tasks and learning them in parallel will improve performance and also, as we will see, it provides a key um, insight uh, to solve our problem. Um, third, we apply closely on the associated table and in our model, which helps the genetic grouping in phenotypic associations. Our approach will give a um, brief background on regression methods. Regression is probably the most uh, important tool for data feeding. Um, a very classic approach for regression is the ordinary least squares. Uh, which minimizes the residual of uh, uh, the residual of error. Um, there are two disadvantages with these squares. First, it's a large variance. Second, the resultant model is hard to interpret. Um, the rich regression forces an extra L2 form regularization on the model. It shrinks the cohesion and leads to um, better numerical stability. However, um, the resultant model is hard to interpret. Um, model selection provides an interpretable model. But as a discrete procedure, it um, the instability problem and small changes in the data could lead to very different results. So uh, I recent, recently um, uh, this uh, absolute shrinkage and selection, also known as the last of the problems, basically uh, enjoy the advantage of both regression and numerical stability and the subset selection that is an interpretable model. Model. And recent, uh, basically, uh, this uh, sparse regression of um, in several different fields, such as statistics and uh, uh, <coughs> recently, there are actually more predictions and uh, improvements along this direction. For example, there are also adaptive lasso and lasso, just to name a few. The idea of lasso is to replace L2 norm with optimization on regression. Next, I give you a question on why this change leads to important sparse, sparsity. Uh, basically, I have plotted the uh, contour lines of the quadratic term here using uh, yellow and uh, the normal term using blue colors. Uh, <coughs> as you can see, uh, in case of L2 regularization, both contour lines are smooth. One is elliptical and the other is circle. Therefore, the regression will lie on the coordinate axis. In comparison, when L1 uh, norm is applied, uh, the contour line is a uh, rotated square with corners on the coordinate axis. Therefore, the direction will likely appear on the coordinate axis corresponding to zero coefficients. And this is the uh, sparsity arises. Okay. Um, why sparsity is, uh, is preferred in our problem? From a mathematical <laughs> point, um, our problem has very large dimension and small sample size. And L1 induced uh, sparsity can remove irrelevant 
different features and gives you an um, interpretable model in terms of molecular markers. And from biological point of view, um, it is typically believed that only a small subset of genes will participate in a certain biological response. Now we have um, uh, mentioned the um, um, suitability for sparse regression problem, and I will then propose our uh, sparse multitask regression. Remind that uh, we have collected the biological response under multiple uh, drug conditions. In order to uh, systematically combine the information from multiple domains and uh, find a common of action, we propose to use uh, a multitask learning framework. Uh, multitask learning is a learning scenario uh, where um, different biology tasks are learned in parallel. Uh, this parallel configuration has shown to uh, lead to better performance due to the information sharing and data pooling mechanisms. A primary problem here is how to uh, enforce this uh, information sharing. Um, a very commonly used uh, scheme is joint regularization uh, in terms of L1, L2 mix norm, which is similar uh, to what is being used in group lasso. Uh, um, this, um, this was actually proposed in 2005 and was later uh, gained a lot of interest from this uh, uh, bioinformatics community. Uh, for example, it has been used in the genome-wide association analysis. Uh, so in our work, we use an approach proposed to enforce the task relatedness by sharing parameters. On the one hand, this can further reduce the number of parameters, which re reduces our computational uh, cost. On the other hand, as we shall see, it is a shared template, the key to finding common mechanism of action. Um, this is the uh, complete model we established. Basically, we have basic data x0 with C cell lines and a number of N genes. On the phenotypic side, we have a number of D drug conditions and phenotypic features. Um, so if one is to perform um, independent regression, there will be a regression coefficient matrix for each drug condition. However, in order to achieve um, the different conditions, um, we uh, forcefully require that uh, TD is a linear perturbation on a basic shared template T with task-specific perturbation matrix PD. Uh, uh, this constraint actually uses simultaneous learning among uh, um, not D tasks. Uh, in order to prevent trivial solutions, we uh, require that the formula norm of PD is smaller than one. Right problem here. Um, basically, it has two sets of matrix variables. One is uh, template T, the other is um, perturbation PDs. Um, unluckily, globally, uh, this uh, problem is not convex. However, we found that the objective is uh, convex with regard to each set of variables. So we propose an alternating optimization scheme to solve the problem. Um, basically, as you can anticipate, we first uh, uh, PD and so for T, um, through some linear algebra manipulation, this can be written as a standard convex problem with, L, with a quadratic term here and L1 regularization. We further perform a low rank approx approximation on the quadratic term here, which allows us to approximately transform the problem into the standard L1 regularized least squares, for which there are various uh, large scale solvers available. Uh, next, I will illustrate why the feasible in our problem. Basically, I show the spectrum of the matrix computed in one number one of our experiment. As you can see, only 48 are strictly non-zero among a number of 3,600 eigenvalues. This specifies a proportion. And uh, in practice, when the matrix Q grows larger, uh, no approximation is almost unavoidable in order to prevent the uh, prohibitive cost. Um, another step is is with C and so for um, This leads to a standard that is form solution. We will project solutions back, back to the field. This two steps here. Objective converges. I will briefly mention some computational details here. First is the perturbation matrix PD. 
Currently, in our experiments, we visualize it as identity matrices and uh, keep it diagonal throughout the iterations, which mean, means that the different phenotypic responses are, are correlated. In practice, one might also try a full uh, preservation matrix, which might lead to lower reconstruction error, and uh, optimum structure is still an open problem for our future research. Uh, we also use um, um, very validation to choose regularization parameters in the L1 um, optimization. And the L1, large scale L1 solver is, uh, um, is an interior point method produced by came from Stanford. Okay, so um, at the end of the day, we have learned a um, association matrix T, which corresponds to the common mechanism of action. Um, it is a sparse two-dimensional table where the rows and columns are all this. So next the problem is how do we um, in, how do we extract information from this template? Um, we propose to use co-clustering to solve this problem. Basically, it simultaneously groups the rows and columns of a matrix. Uh, co-clustering has been very widely used in our community. Um, basically, it's validation of string expression, time course data used for phenotypic classification analysis. Um, but to uh, has been applied on a uh, code regression. So um, suppose we have a uh, template T where each row corresponds to a gene and each column to a, a phenotype. Um, so this association table actually naturally to a bipartite graph representation where non-zero entry to an entry in a gene node. And we apply the spectral clustering algorithm in 2005. Um, which acts using that. As you can see, after the co clustering becomes very apparent. And it tells us in. Uh, in the uh, um, now finished using our algorithm our results. First we will validate um, our algorithm using a synthetic data. Um, basically, we um, create a data matrix X and a number of, uh, we use a sparse template and a number of uh, perturbation matrices corresponding different tasks. And then we uh, compute the uh, response on Y. Um, here we will realize the um, uh, the columns of the, the uh, regression matrix C D using uh, each colored line for columns. Uh, this is the ground truth, and uh, this is the uh, uh, estimation by ordinary least squares. As you can see, uh, the very much fluctuations due to the large variance and. Uh, we apply um, independent Lasso on each task. We can see that the results are much more improved, but there are still uh, fluctuations that hide the true signal. Um, this is the result by um, multitask uh, bus learning. As we can see, our accuracy is further improved compared with Lasso, which means that if there exists relatedness, employing this in our actual learning process would uh, improve the performance. Um, next, we will. <coughs> apply our algorithm to find common mechanism of action, uh, resistance or response to, uh, <coughs> to the drug, to the logical uh, data on their two drugs, the item 40 and the uh, ERASA. Um, so use, basically we can find a uh, uh, two condition, and we will use a uh, serialized uh, association between the set of Common marker is B1 and G cell, cell cycle. Uh, green color represents a positive association. Uh, I'll have more discussions on this. Uh, first, we find that um, can also be found in independent cluster. 
Um, this needs to be incorporated in the function. But I want um, CTA. CTA is doing a very strong request in our association study. Um, it is involved, it is a gene involved in apoptosis. It is commonly uh, um, regulated by the uh, who's a gene on the one on AP1. Um, the, the, the drug regulation. Of a cell cycle protein. Um, um, it's all um, it was fun. Um, I think by some new marks that in um, here, which demonstrates a very strong cell cycle and the With G1, our target morphological validation. The state two is relevant to cancer. For example, um, it is downright is induced by P3. It is a candidate for tumor induces joint arrest. Um, the knockout of the same um, cancer cell MCF10A is shown to be. Decreases sensitivity to Dr. Robinson, it downregulates Caterin and beta cantonin, it upregulates uh, fibronet, meaning that it is EFT. So um, basically, it's also a very important layer in a stress response. However, it's uh, you know, not very well understood. Um, um, that's why we have stations and uh, we are on progress now. And we hope in the near future. Okay, conclusions. First, we have uh, proposed a um, system that couples um, that's not only different with co clustering to predict and visualize the association um, uh, of the uh, common mechanism of action uh, among several um, therapeutic targets. And uh, our conventional approach has identified the CLCA2 as a potential common switch, and the validation is underway. Uh, okay, this is the end. Uh, thank you and uh, questions. So it was a little hard to read your, the list of genes, but I didn't see EGFR in there. Did EGFR not show up? And if not, why not? Isn't uh, that the target for ERESA? Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, EGFR, uh, it seems like it doesn't appear in our gene list. We, um, but we actually find a number of uh, other varying genes which coincide with the literature. Um, so if EGFR is the target of the drug, why doesn't it show up in your method? Uh, because as, as we have shown, different uh, drugs will potentially hit different regions of the molecular space. Um, therefore, we find that actually uh, CLCA2 is a common switch between CI1014 and ERASA. Uh, as to EGFR, um, uh, we haven't observed a very strong correlation. Um, okay. Can you comment on how your method is different from the elastic net regression uh, developed by uh, Zoom in 2005, which has a combination of maintaining sparsity but also encouraging grouping of features? And if you, and that's so f one question with respect to the technical differences with the, with the other, with the elastic net, and then a second related follow up is how you compared. Uh, running something like that with your data, and do you, what differences do you see in the results when you run, for example, elastic net compared to your method? Uh, this is a very good question. Elastic, elastic net will uh, enforces both L1 and L2 regularization. And the primary goal is to enforce sparsity and smoothness. Uh, however, the uh, focus of our work is to is to apply the multitask learning to boost the performance. Basically, we utilize this information from different domains. I think this is a key difference with uh, Elastic Net. However, it would also be very um, informative to be able to compare these different methods, and uh, this would be a very um, interesting future research. Thank you. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you've actually looked at uh, Bayesian 
DDoS aggression from Daphne Collar's group, and uh, you mentioned something about uh, like joint prior across things. Is that uh, on the same lines of what? Uh, yeah, we are aware of this work. Basically, it's very related. However, the difference is we um, our um, we enforce the task relatedness by sharing parameters. This is uh, different from other approaches. Well, sense. they also share parameters by in introducing a prior, which um, basically shares parameters across the different regression approaches by using a hyper prior. Yeah, in this sense, it's a, it's a very related approach, and uh, we would like to make a further comparison with this uh, Bayesian based approach uh, in our future research. I have a question for, about your co-cluster. What's the difference between co-cluster and the hierarchical clustering? Um, basically, the hierarchical clustering is uh, performs the uh, permutation on the rows and columns in independently. However, co-clustering achieves this grouping simultaneously along both rows and columns of a data matrix. I think this is the key difference, which uh, should produce better results. Okay, so as we, uh, as I mentioned, we used a low rank approximation and we used a very efficient large scale L1 solver. So in practice, this, uh, all the computations can be done in about uh, one or two hours. Uh, um, uh, the size, uh, we have actually incorporated a, a number of about around 6,000 genes in our study and the three phenotypic features in terms of G1, S, and G2. Uh, we could still handle, actually, uh, say, uh, around uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 k, k genes 